back to my channel. So in today's video, we are talking camera basics. I get a lot of questions over Instagram about what camera bodies or what camera lenses to go out and purchase. And I wanna start teaching you guys the fundamentals of photography so that you can better understand and master the tools that you already have. I know how confusing it could be when you're using a camera for the first time or if you've had camera after camera, but the camera dials or the setting or photography talk in general just seems like a completely different language. So I wanna break down these fundamentals in the simplest way so that my beginners can understand. Now for the purpose of having the most control over your photos and your videos, I will be teaching you guys to use your camera in manual mode. So let's get into it. Shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, commonly referred to as the exposure triangle, all work together to control the amount of light that gets into your lens. You have to balance all three of them at the same time to make sure that your image is exposed properly. If one of them is off, your image can be overexposed, meaning too bright, or it can be underexposed, meaning too dark. Now the best analogy that I can give when talking about the exposure triangle is your eye. Your shutter speed is gonna be like your eyelid, your aperture is gonna be like your pupil, and the ISO is gonna be like those eye drops that you get at the eye doctor. I know it sounds like really weird, but I will explain later. Now I know I say this often, but in order to break the rules, you have to understand the rules. So I'm first gonna give you the rules for shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. And I'm gonna explain what changing one of those will do. But remember, if you change one of those, it will affect the other. After I explain what the rules are, I'll then go into stylistic choices and why one may choose to change one over the other to affect the style of their image. And to make things even more confusing, the rules for photography differ slightly from the rules for video just a bit so i will make that distinction once we get to it but enough disclaimers let's get into it let's start this off with shutter speed okay so your shutter speed is like your eyelid inside of the camera the shutter is like a curtain that closes to capture your image now imagine you were able to take a picture with your eyes the longer your eyelids stay open the brighter your image is going to be because more light is coming in. Now, if you blinked really fast, the darker your image would be because less light is coming in. Now, this can be a little confusing, but shutter is expressed as a fraction of a second, 1 50th of a second, 1 1 25th of a second, 1 2 50th of a second, etc. The bigger the bottom number, the smaller the amount of time, making it faster and letting in less light. So shooting at 1 over 30 is going to let in way more light than shooting at 1 over 250. You may have heard the term long exposure, which simply just means that the shutter is open for a long amount of time, and that could be for one second, five seconds, or even a few minutes, which does create a certain look, but we'll get into that later. Now, depending on your camera, the shutter icon display may represent a whole number, but that's actually the denominator of that fraction of a second. The second thing I wanna get into is aperture. So your aperture is like your pupil. It controls how bright something appears to you by how small or how wide it's open. Just like your pupil, when it's dilated, more light is coming in, making it brighter. And when it constricts, less light is coming in, making it darker. Now, the way that we talk about aperture is through f-stops. You may be familiar with hearing f1.2, f2, f8, f11, etc. Now, this again can be confusing, but the bigger the f-stop number, the smaller the aperture opening. So the opening for, let's say, f1.2 is gonna be way bigger than the opening for, let's say, f22. So if you're trying to let in less light and your aperture is the one that you're adjusting, you'd wanna choose a smaller aperture like f5.6 over, let's say, a f1.2. And lastly, let's talk about ISO. Your ISO is like those eye drops that you get at the eye doctor's office. They make your eyes more more sensitive to the light that's coming in when you step outside of the doctor's office what you would have seen as regular and normal is now super bright and super uncomfortable that's sort of how ISO works it boosts the sensitivity to the film or a more modern time your camera sensor to brighten your image based on your shutter speed and your aperture setting. So in most basic terms, the lower the ISO, the less sensitive it's gonna be, meaning it'll be darker. And the higher the ISO, the more sensitive it's going to be, meaning it will be brighter. Okay, I know that was a lot, but now that we understand how shutter speed, aperture, and ISO 
affect the exposure of your image. Now we can move on to talk about why one may choose to make adjustments to one over the other or when you would use one over the other to affect the style of your image. First, let's jump back to shutter speed. Shutter speed affects the motion blur of your image. The higher your shutter speed, the more you freeze motion, and the lower your shutter speed, the more motion blur that you're able to capture. So let's say you're shooting sports or you're outside trying to capture some snow, you may opt for a higher shutter speed to freeze that moment in time. On the other hand, let's say you're trying to shoot water in a stylistic way or you're trying to capture the flow of cars on a highway, you may opt to shoot in a slower shutter speed to emphasize that movement. Now here is where photo and video veer off. In photography, you may opt to crank up that shutter speed to let in less light or simply make your shutter speed decisions based on your exposure. However, for video, your shutter speed is directly connected to the frame rate that you're shooting in. I'm not gonna go into a deep explanation of frame rate and shutter speed in this video, but to keep it super simple, a good rule of thumb to finding your shutter speed is by doubling whatever frame rate you're shooting in. So if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, you'd want your shutter speed to be one over 50. Now I know that double 24 is 48, but most cameras don't have that as an option. So you'd go with the closest option, which would be one over 50. If you're shooting in 30 frames per second, you'd want your shutter speed to be one over 60. Now, as I mentioned before, in all art forms, you can break the rules, you can do whatever it is you wanna do, but the reason why we do this is to create a natural motion blur. Now let's jump back into aperture. One of the main stylistic choices for changing your aperture is to affect how your subject looks at different focal lengths. This is where you'll typically hear the term depth of field. Now in the most simplest terms, that is observing your subject from front to back. Imagine you're shooting two people or two objects and you have one closest to the lens and one furthest away. Your aperture, your f-stop is gonna determine how those two people or objects look in that final image. Now you often hear the term bokeh, which is that blurry, out of focus background that a lot of people try to achieve. The lower your aperture, the more bokeh your final image will have. Now on the other side of that, the higher the aperture, the more in focus the total image would be, which would be super important if you were doing like a group shot with multiple people, or if you were shooting landscapes or doing street photography where you needed the whole frame to be in focus. Lastly, let's take it back to ISO. Now ISO is typically the last of the three that we think about stylistically, but it does matter when we're making decisions. So sometimes you may have the shutter speed that you want, the aperture that you want, but your image is still too dark. And this usually happens when you're indoors or if you're shooting outside at night. In these cases, you're gonna wanna boost your ISO to get your image to that desired exposure. Where you need to be careful though is there is a limit on how much you can increase that ISO before you start to introduce noise or grain into your image. Now, depending on the type of camera that you have, that will determine what that limit is for you. Some of the more professional cameras can shoot at higher ISOs without that visible appearance of grain as to where some of the more entry-level cameras, grain may be introduced at lower ISO numbers. So the lower the ISO, the cleaner and more crisp your image is going to look, and the higher the ISO, the grainier your image is going to look. Okay, let's tie this all together. Remember, as a triangle, all three are connected, and if you make adjustments to one, you have to compensate in another area. When it comes to video, if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, your shutter speed is locked in at one over 50, so if you're trying to make adjustments for light, you'll likely be making adjustments for your aperture and or your ISO. Now, when it comes to photo, you do have more flexibility in adjusting all three but this goes for video as well remember the effect that your choices will have when you make changes to the aperture when you make changes to shutter speed and your ISO I know this was like a lot of information especially for those of you guys that are just starting off but I want to give you some homework I have to give you homework so I want you to take your camera out and switch it to manual mode if it's not already there and take a picture in your room with these camera settings 
Now observe what happens. Then while keeping your shutter speed and your ISO the same, don't change it, I want you to now change your aperture and snap a photo at each of the aperture settings that your lens allows and then see what happens. Then do the same with your shutter speed and your ISO respectively. So as you keep the two the same, you make changes to the other and snap a photo to see what happens. And then to take it one step further, I want you to do the same experiment but do it outdoors and compare the results from outside to the same camera settings that you took while you were indoors. This is how you learn and get more accustomed to how your camera settings affect your final image. The more that you do this, the quicker that you're gonna become to adjust your settings when you enter new environments. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If it was, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and refer back to it as many times as you need to. I'm gonna be doing more videos like this to cover and really dig deep into the fundamentals to help you master the tools that you have by really understanding the basics. So if there's a question that you guys have or if there's a topic that you want me to cover, go ahead and leave it down below and I will do my best to cover it in a future video. As always, guys, thank you so, so, so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.